In this video, I tell you about my booty from, from Adepticon. You know it, you love it. It's the Adepticon booty video, 2016 edition. Now, um, again, this is not the booty that some of you might be thinking about. This is like a pirate's treasure. This is the things that I brought back from Adepticon and uh, there's a lot of it. So I'm gonna try to run through it as quickly as possible so that this video does not get crazy long. Uh, number one, I brought back this swell hoodie. It's got the Adepticon 2016 uh, kind of techno Viking dude on it and an even huger one on the back, which maybe I can slip a picture in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's comfy and I like it. So um, I've never bought a hoodie from them before or anything t-shirts at all. I used to buy some bandanas, but the hoodie saw that. It was like, yep, had to have it. Another piece of Adepticon branded uh, stuff, the dice, you have to get the dice. Uh, these, this year they're green and you can see here they're, um, they've got uh, Adepticon 2016 on the ones and they've got the skull logo thing right here on the sixes. So yeah, these are cool. And I've got a silver pair, a black pair, an orange pair, and I've got a green pair. So, you know, it's just, they're like 10 bucks for these dice and it's cool. You've got to get them. I got to get them every year. Another thing that I got, not exactly, I didn't buy it. I took a class, uh, Hertz Hurst Art Molds, how to do them, what to do them with, uh, you know, how to, all that stuff. And uh, I got to pour a bunch of, um, Fieldstone and Fieldstone Ruins, and then I was able to learn how to build with them. And so here is the fruits of my labor. Uh, you can see here, it's this cool ruin, and I'm gonna start putting a lot of stuff, you know, like extra like kitty litter and some gravel and dirt. I'm gonna round off these corners too and make them a little bit more organic. You know, I don't want it to look just square. I wanna kinda round off some of the corners, which may be difficult. I don't want to vibrate all the stuff off of it, but we'll see how it goes. But yeah, it turned out really well. I really liked um, the way that it all worked. And I, like I said, I own these two, or maybe I didn't. I do own these two molds. I bought them years ago at Gen Con. I've just never poured before. So now I'm going to start doing that and build more stuff. You'll probably see a video about it at some point. I, I'm just, I'm just going through the box. I've got a box here. These are the things. Uh, Wreckage. Wreckage is a cool uh, post-apocalyptic um, RPG slot. Well, it's more, in my opinion, a, uh, uh, you know, skirmish game, tabletop skirmish game than it is an RPG, but it has both of those flavors. So you can also do campaign stuff, kind of like a Mordheim or a Necromunda or whatever. Um, I did an interview with the guys from Wreckage. They've been around for a while. I've actually done several interviews, one this year, but I also did one back in like 2012 when I was still with Beast of War. And, uh, they're still, you know, cruising along and they've, got a lot of different stuff going on. You should watch the video when you get a chance. And when I put it up, it's not up. Well, when you see this, it might be up, but then again, it might not. If and you, there'll be a link, you'll be fine. Um, yeah, so I bought this, or I actually, they gave me a copy of this book, uh, which was very nice. But then I bought, let's see here. Um, the Stakers, which are kind of like homesteaders. I bought a box of Stakers 1 and Stakers 2. There's probably about eight, maybe 10, models in here. You can't really see anything on the, the box except for the cool kind of artwork and stuff. But um, yeah, the models in here are cool. They're all metal and I'll probably talk a little bit more about them a bit later on. I also bought a, another small blister, but I think I left it at home. But that was um, two more guys to add to this group. So post-apocalyptic, I'm a big fan. And so these are really cool. Another thing, foregrounds. Laser cut MDF terrain. Everybody loves it. These are really cool. Uh, these are pre-painted. So you put them together and then you don't have to paint them if you don't want to. I'm going to paint them, you know, but I bought them because it's like a ruined kind of Mordheim type house. And um, I'm going to use it for Frostgrave. And uh, so, yeah, this is, this is uh, for advanced modelers, as far as I can tell. There's a lot of parts and pieces going on in here. And so, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. But once I get it all together, uh, it'll look hopefully roughly like this, and then I will probably paint it and try to make it look grungier and dirtier. But this, I've seen a lot of different things. They had a lot of stuff at the show at Adepticon from these guys, and it was, this was neat. So I had to pick this up. Speaking of Frostgrave, um, I've talked about Frostgrave on the channel, and I like it quite a bit. And I was happened to walking, I was happened to walk by, and I saw the Frostgrave booth at Adepticon. Got to talk to the uh, guy who wrote it, which was really cool. But I also found out that they have plastic model kits now. 
check these things. Yeah, there it's set up. Check these things out. So you got soldiers and you have cultists. There are 20 models in each of these boxes and they are, the boxes were $31 a piece. They're super customizable and really kind of interesting. So I'm gonna do a little quickie unboxing because there's really only just the one screw and it's repeated over and over again. So if you look here, you've got um, basically five different kind of leg and torso, you know, groups. And then you've got these super cool little heads, kind of pointy, you know, you know, cultisty looking heads. You've got swords, you've got crossbows, you've got bows, everything you need to make yourself either cultists or the soldiers with the shields and the maces and that kind of stuff. You can build archers, bowmen, or which are the same thing, crossbowmen. Um, there's a lot of different stuff you can build with these kits and they're super, I think really reasonable, really interesting. I mean, you'll be seeing more about these as well on the channel eventually. I also bought um, a Sigilist and Apprentice which I'll show you right here. So these two guys, this is kind of your wizard and apprentice or your, you know, your leader and apprentice type of, type of deal. And then I also bought, uh, it says Lich and apprentice, but the Lich, he doesn't look all that lichy because um, I expect more bony face. So I'm gonna probably just use him as a necromancer and necromancer's assistant. So um, these guys are metal, but still really cool, kind of interesting, sort of old school, not so 3D, but really interesting models. And when I say not so 3D, I mean like not so obviously you know, computer made. They look like they're done more by hand. I could be wrong on the plastic guys, but I don't think I'm wrong in the metal guys. They look like they're done by hand, but yet they're still interesting and I like that. I bought the first thing that I've ever purchased from KR Multicase. Um, it's this, this skinny little box. And you're like, well, that's kind of silly. What kind of models can you fit in there? Not too many, I bet. Well, it's not four models. As it turns out, it's for dice. Now, why would you buy a hard metal, aluminum probably, box to keep your dice in. That seems like overkill because when you take it and you open it up, you now have two dice trays. So when you go to your shop, rather than rolling dice and having them fall off the table and all that stuff, your dice are in here, you open it up, you can give one of the trays to your opponent. And now you, both of you got dice tray. You're not knocking into terrain, knocking over models, rolling dice on the floor. It was like 22 bucks. And I was like, well, that's kind of a cool idea. So, um, I had a friend who had one before. I don't remember them having the nice velvet on the inside. So I think if they would have, I probably would have bought one sooner. So maybe this is new, or maybe I just never noticed before on my friend's set of these. But when I saw them at the you know, convention, I was like, well, that's really cool. And I'm not gonna generally see KR Multicase over here in the United States because they're an English company from what I know. So um, they can just go back together and carry the dice in there. And now boom, you know, they're all protected, which you don't have to protect dice that much, but yeah. It was a kind of a neat thing. So I definitely was glad I was able to, to see it and to kind of check it out and pick one up and not have to ship it. Okay, I got one more thing before I go into the big swag bag that you get from Adepticon. I had to get this. A friend of mine showed it to me and I was like, I, I have to get that. But I got to put it slightly together for just a second here. If you'll just bear with me. Um, if you follow me on Snapchat, you've probably already seen this. It's a tiny, tiny little LCD screen. It's got a speaker, it's got a battery. I'm not sure. It's got little tiny Asian ladies already inside dancing around and whatnot. It's got a, a I wish there was a volume. I know there's a volume control. I just don't know which one it is, but there's a, um, I'm gonna put this over here. There's a tiny little SD card, micro SD card, so I can put my own videos or whatever I want on there. And then this is gonna become a billboard in a game. Oh, that made it louder. There's like six different buttons, but they're not labeled. So I don't know what they do. Eventually I'll find the volume one. That's not it. There we go. There we go. So anyway, yeah. This was 45 bucks. They also sold it with a laser cut MDF um, billboards. You could just slide it in there and then it held everything. But I want to make my own kind of cool looking rundown, maybe post-apocalyptic billboard, which is this running like on top of like a, a beat up old building that maybe someone has redone. But just the fact, I mean, I might just leave this in there. Yeah, that might, that could be annoying as hell, but I might just leave it in there. Let that run, you know, that, that would bring about the apocalypse. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, it's a cool little device. It was, I've never seen anything quite like it. And this is the type of thing, again, that you can see when you're at Adepticon. So let me see if I can get it on the close cam here so you can kind of see. 
I mean, it's just kind of an amalgamation of parts and things like that, but I can probably hide most of that away in some fashion, like inside the terrain building. But um, yeah, it's, I think it's just gonna be sort of awesome. I'm looking forward to it. And you'll see more of it eventually here on the channel. This is probably what you're really here for. And it is the swag bag from Adepticon. So I signed up for Adepticon about three minutes after registration opened. So the first 500 or 1000 people got the big kick-ass swag bag. So they were different colors this year. So the blue, the, the, this was the blue one, which was for the more kick-ass swag bag. There was also a black one, which had less stuff in it. I think there was a red one, which was maybe for VIGs or whatever. But um, this has been relatively untampered with since uh, Adepticon. Um, let's see here. So this is the uh, Hordes two-player starter box. That was just in there. That's cool of Privateer Press to do that kind of stuff. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, it's it's a big monstrous uh, miniatures combat thing, and you got uh, well those guys and whatever those things are. And yeah, I don't really know a hell of a lot about Hordes, but now I've got a whole box of it, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. But I'll figure something out. Uh, let's see here. This is my receipt. Nobody cares about that. Um, oh, this was interesting. It's a Malifaux mystery box. So uh, I haven't opened it yet because it's a mystery, but as soon as I got my swag bag, this dude who I didn't know, and I don't think he knew me, just sort of sidled up next to me. And he was like, hey, did you get a Malifaux mystery box in your bag? And I was like, what? And then he's, and, then I, and so I went and looked and I'm like, yeah. He's like, I'll give you $5 for it. And I was like, I don't know. Do I need an adult? I'm not sure. So anyway, I'm gonna hold on to this for a while. Maybe I'll open it. Maybe I'll do a live opening on like YouTube or something. That'll be probably boring. But anyway, uh, or maybe I'll just sell it on eBay, like unopened to keep its, you know, value. I don't know, whatever. Uh, I don't play as much Malifaux as I should anymore, but yeah, so there's definitely something in there because I can hear it. Uh, let's see here, what do we got here? This is from Maelstrom's Edge which I got in on the Kickstarter for. So um, it's a company from mostly over in the UK, people who kind of helped to run DACA, DACA.com, the forums uh, here. Anyway, so yeah, this is, um, so you get this card with this information. There's some, you know, dudes in the back here that you can put together. It looks like, wow, it looks like four guys. Oh, there's four set of pants. That's that's a thing. So yeah, this was kind of free in the backs too. So that's kind of neat. Um, this is, Micro Art Studio, their base system. I got the forest bases. Um, so anyway, they're just little inserts. They go in these uh, 30 millimeter, I guess, bases. And um, then you just glue them in there, glue your dudes to them, paint them. This is kind of what they look like. Um, yeah, they've got little trees and berries and leaves and all that kind of jazz. Um, that's kind of interesting. I might do something with that at some point. Uh, Abundant Riches, a Wild West Exodus novel written by Craig Gallant of um, D6 Generation fame, the podcast, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I might read that at some point. I don't think I've ever read any of the fluff before from um, Wild West Exodus. Let's see. I got a cool patch, big cool patch. I don't know what it's for. If anybody out there is watching this video and can see this patch and just let me know in the comments below what the heck it's for, that'd be cool. Cause I have no idea. Um, it's sort of neat. I might put it on my, my BDU shirt, but uh, yeah. What is this? This is something for Guild Ball, which I guess there were show deals for Guild Ball, which I did not take, um, you know, I didn't do sadly. Uh, here's an ad for Costco. I don't know why Costco is trying to get me to shop at Costco while I'm at Adepticon. Whatever. Um, ooh, speaking of which, Medieval Times, uh, all seats 32 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. I could have gotten uh, gone to a Medieval Times and seen sword fighters and eaten a turkey leg, I guess. I don't know. Um, let's see, what else is in here? 10% off all digital subscriptions from War Games Illustrated. Well, that's kind of nice, actually. I I, uh, I haven't subscribed, but I do buy ep certain issues once in a while digitally from War Games Illustrated, so that's kind of cool. 25% um, off from Dicehead. So that's a coupon. 
Um, this is a, an interesting resin base. It comes from Elric's Hobbies. There's your Elric's Hobbies. And uh, that's probably sort of focusy. And an interesting kind of resin base, which I might use for something. Um, let's see here, what's this? Geek Nation Tours postcard, Depticon 2016 giveaway contest. Wish you were here. Um, yep. There's a lot of stuff in this bag. This is gonna take some time. So I'm gonna try to speed up. Uh, let's see, Monsters, this is fill out the back of the card and return it to Privateer Press booth to receive a free gift. I did not realize that the Privateer Press was actually at the convention. I mean, there was a lot of people playing it, that, but I didn't see the booth, but uh, that's interesting. Um, Sweet Adepticon uh, beer coaster for 2016. That's pretty cool. You know, it's just a normal beer coaster, but it's got Adepticon stuff on it. We like that. This is a model or two, just one. It's a lady with a shield and a sword and what looks like a gun. Um, yeah, I don't know. I kind of wish when they, when we get these little baggies like this, I wish they'd at least put a card or a piece of paper or anything in there so you'd know, like, well, what is that? Where does it come from? I don't know. I suppose I could look on the website maybe. Um, it says copyright 2016 on it and on the back side of this brew, it says nothing. So I have no idea. But uh, it's kind of a neat looking model. I might do something with it. That's sort of cool. Uh, what else we got? $2 off Green Man Designs. Uh, I think that this is the company. This is not the company that I bought the crazy little um, LCD screen from, but I think they were right next to them. So what else? Okay. So Battlefront has made a new game recently called Tanks. This is in a big plastic bag. Um, so the concept of tanks, to me, from what I've seen online, it looks a lot like um, X-Wing, but with plastic tanks. You put them together, which is not like X-Wing, but you put them together, paint them and all that stuff, but then there's little cardboard templates and you move your tanks, kind of following that along and doing all that stuff. So um, I think there's like quick start rules in here, uh, in this plastic bag, and it looks like there's two, uh, some sort of German tank. Those don't look American. I can't think of the name. So I, anyway, but yeah, so those are, those are kind of interesting. Oh, this was cool too. Big hardcover book from Cool Mini or Not. This is the Cool Mini or Not Annual 2010. So this um, is a really cool looking book and it's a hardcover. That doesn't look comfortable. I don't know why she's just wearing a belt over her breasts. That does not look like it would be a good idea, but I'm not a lady, so I don't know. Um, I don't know what the hell this is. Imperial Infantryman's Uplifting Primer. Oh, that's fun. Um, oh, you can hear the brand newness of this book, but it is filled with astounding looking model photography and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to kind of just going through and checking this out. But yeah, I mean, you know, that's what you expect from Cool Mini, but yeah, it's really cool photography. And I think they do this every year. And this was the 2010. Other people I knew got a 2009, some people got a 2011. I think they were just pretty much firing through them and getting them into the bags. Speaking of Wargaming Illustrated, War, or excuse me, War Games Illustrated, um, this is a relatively recent-ish, no, this is February 2013. This is an old episode or an old issue, but that's okay. Um, you know, painting little um, metal shields is pretty much painting little metal shields. There hasn't been a lot of new technology in that area, but you can kind of find out a lot of different information. This is a great magazine. I've always been a big fan of um, War Games Illustrated. And like I said, I kind of have a tendency to buy the digital copies myself when I do because I just, it's, it's nice to be able to carry them around on my iPad and not have lots of magazines laying around the house. And my wife likes it better that way too. What else? Um, Steinal Res Red Primer Sample. This is from our friends at Badger. Um, I think it's red, red or orange, burnt orange maybe. Um, this stuff is really cool for airbrushes from what I understand. I have some black and some gray and some white and I've messed with a little bit here and there. But yeah, now they're starting to make the Steinal, Steinal Res in colors. So it's a primer, but it's also becoming at that, that point a base coat, which is always helping and saving you a step. So boom. Uh, let's see here. 
Uh, Games and Gears Adepticon Ultimate Bundle deal. I sadly did not use that. I should probably look through the bag when I'm at the convention. I have a tendency to like open it up and go, well, there's no $100 bills in it. And then I take it back up to the hotel room and I set it down. I don't really see it again until this video. So this is live theater, my friends. I mean, it's not live when you're watching it, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, Dark Deeds. This was a game from Games and Gears that they're putting out. Um, and so this was a card that would tell you, that you, hey, you should go play a demo, which I didn't get a chance to, sadly. Uh, let's see here. Secret Weapon, 10% off with this coupon and a free shot glass. That's sort of cool. And a free soft body black wash. Their washes are swell. I like them a lot. I already own the soft body black wash, so I guess I didn't need that. So that's good. Um, speaking of Secret Weapon min miniatures, it's just a grab bag. I'm just pulling stuff out. But right here... Um, Oh, this is a code through um, the 17th of April. I can get 10% off there. So that's very nice of them. And there's also two little free, you can see in here, um, you know, resin bases, which obviously is kind of their big thing. Although they did just come out now with a new line of actual, instead of washes, they've not, now got acrylic paints. They're working to have new acrylic paints made. Um, the first color sets that they're going through are all basically for like weathering and rusty stuff and whatnot. Uh, Granite City Food, F enjoy a complimentary appetizer. I don't even know where that was, so you can tell I didn't. But, um, you know, that's kind of cool. It, when you go to Adepticon, these swag bags are really helpful if you actually pay attention, unlike me. But then you can get coupons and all kinds of stuff like that. Arena Rex, this is, um, you get an event die and 15% off at Adepticon. I mean, that's pretty cool. Arena Rex was uh, basically like a gladiatorial combat game that looked really kind of interesting, honestly. Uh, let's see here. Ethereum. We like Ethereum. Um, we've talked to them before a little bit on and off, and they were at Adepticon again this year. I did see their booth. Uh, let's see what else. Um, this is, uh, you know, you guys are familiar with Mod Cubes. Mod Cubes, it's like a little die that you put together, and then you can put little different pieces like on each face. So instead of using it as a die, you can use it to go, oh, this is wrecked, or this is stunned, or whatever. And there's lots of different types. This one comes with one that says Jink. So if I bought some Mod Cubes, I could slide a Jink thing in there. So you get that for free. Um, this is from Bombshell Miniatures, special for Adepton, Adepticon 2016 attendees. Receive 15% off your next purchase, your online web store, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's cool. Um, let's see, this is, oh, these were cool. This is a new company I haven't seen before called Muse on Minis. And so what it is, is, you know, like when you're playing a game and you have those wound counters and you've taken two wounds and you take three wounds and whatever. So this is a special Adepticon one, which I don't know how well you can see it here. So it's got the Adepticon logo on it and then you can spin it and then you can put like eight wounds, seven wounds left, six wounds left, but it's a, it's just a magnet. It's just a difficult to get apart, but it's just a magnet. Um, you know, so it's like this, you get the numbers in there, you get the thing and you just snap it back together. One of those really strong magnets. And they were selling these there. I thought they were kind of cool, but I didn't end up buying some. I thought about doing it and then I kind of forgot towards the end. Uh, let's see here. This is my syllabus from my Hearst Arts Molds um, thing that I did, my class. So there was a syllabus explaining some things, and you can see, oh, here, by the way, are some different types of molds that you can get. Like I said, those first art things are cool, and I'm going to be doing more with them, because I want to do more ruined stuff, and I really like the flagstones, and I already own them, so why not? Uh, what do we got? ACP Games. Um, Jimbo and Mike. I don't know. So this is a, this is, this is a very tiny little model, and I don't know what it's for. Like, look at that. See, there's my fingernail, and that's a model. It's a little tiny metal. It looks like a robot with a sword. You probably can't even barely see it. I can barely see it, like right here. And I'm looking through my glasses. So I don't know what that's for, but it's sort of interesting. What else? Um, Star Trooper Miniatures from www.startrooperminis.com. They have... Oh, that guy's kind of cool. So, yeah, he's um, upside down. But he's a neat little metal Star Trooper guy. He's kind of a one piece, which is sort of nice, but uh, comes with a slotted base. Uh, never heard of this company before, but that's a cool little model. I will probably at some point paint him. Oh, a uh, Poe Dameron card here from, um, what do you call it, from the X-Wing game. It's uh, like a special edition, but it's got, it's not doesn't have the normal back. It has a, you know, a promo back. So I don't know if it's really worth anything or not, but um, 
Yeah, if you play Poe po Dameron, you can use that card instead. This is interesting. Like, this is another metal model in a plastic bag with no kind of nomenclature, so I don't know what it's for. If you guys know, almost every year someone's like, oh, that was the such and such model. And I'm like, hey, great. So I don't know, but um, this is interesting. So, okay. So, and again, the plastic bag is sort of shiny. You've got this guy, I think he almost looks like a like an inquisitor. Like he's got a big cloak and he's got a big crazy gun and robot-y stuff and a sword. And then he even comes with a metal base that's already pre-sculpted. It's really kind of interesting. So um, yeah, this guy could be really sort of cool to put together and paint. I do, he really does look like an inquisitor. So I don't know what he's for, but I'll probably do something with him at some point. So that's cool. I would have probably never gotten anything like that. Uh, is there anything else left in here? Yep. Candlelight Yellow from the Master Series of paints from Reaper Bones, which is cool. Um, you always like to have a little bit extra paint, you know what I mean? So why not? Um, and I don't know that I ever had a color quite like this before. But uh, yeah, I think that's... My bag is now empty. I have an empty bag. So now... And, and plus... So I have all that stuff, plus a swell bag to carry stuff in. Um, yeah, so uh, one last thing that I did get that I forgot to bring, or it was just too unwieldy, um, is a uh, the guys over at Table War slash Frontline Gaming. Um, they made a new type of fat mat, those, those gaming mats that have the stuff printed on them, and they made a new lava one. And I was able to get a 4x4 four four lava mat, which looks really, really cool. You will see it in um, uh, battle reports at some point going forward. But it's very dark. And then it's very bright, like red and orange, and even a little bit of yellow in all the cracked bits and stuff like that. And a nice, really nice material. Um, I'll try to see if I can maybe slip a picture in here. It, yeah, so the four foot by four foot. And um, it comes in a case, which is lovely, just like all the other fat mats from those guys. So yeah, um, that's all the stuff that I brought home. And um, I've been, you know, now I got to put it all back together and take it home from the studio back to my home home and um, figure out where I'm going to put it, what I'm going to do with it. And... Um, and then just start thinking about next year.